Hi, I'm Dan Matier. I'm the Family Life Pastor at Eastridge Church, and I'm here to talk to you about tools and resources to build your ministry. Uh, as I'm thinking about tools, though, I have to tell you I am in a pretty sweet time of life right now because I've recently obtained a chainsaw, and life is different for me. Uh, I didn't know what it was going to be like pre-chainsaw. Everything is, every day is different. I think about it, honestly, because I love chainsawing. I just moved into a, a house where we've got a, a, lot, a big backyard that has a lot of fallen trees, so I said I need to get a chainsaw. And I'm finding out that there are things that are possible now that were not possible before the chainsaw. Things that I, I, uh, are so much easier now with this awesome tool. Now, I don't want to talk about chainsaws, although I probably could talk for a while. It's pretty fun. Uh, but I want to talk about tools because I, there's a few truths I think that we all agree on in ministry. First of all, ministry presents challenges, right? No matter what area of ministry we're in, it presents challenges, especially children's ministries. Lots of volunteers, lots of uh, unexpected chaos, unpredictability. Ministry presents challenges. Two, ministry is constantly changing. We're constantly dealing with new people, new generations, new challenges to deal with. And th the third truth I think we can all agree on is the job is easier to do when you have the right tools. So what I want to do today is just offer tools in three separate areas. We could probably talk about hundreds of things that could make your children's ministry easier, but I'm just going to identify three different areas and two tools for each. So the first area I want to talk about is tools to build your team. You know, as I uh, have served in children's ministry and have worked with people who serve in children's ministry, I uh, realize and understand one of the best things you can do is just build your team. Because no matter how you're strong or weak, no matter what your personal skill set is, if you can build a good team, you can lead a good ministry. <clears throat> so I want to talk about two tools uh, to help you build your team. And, and these are pretty simple things, but if employed well, I think will be life-changing or ministry-changing. The first one is a good online form. Now, that might sound a little silly. That might sound a little ridiculous. But let me, let me uh, unpack that a little bit. Um, we want to recruit people to our ministry, right? We think a lot about uh, how we're going to recruit them, if they're going to serve, what do we say to really draw them in. What's often neglected is when do people want to commit to ministry, right? Because we have our time when they'd like to commit, right? We set up a little booth on Sunday morning or we have a little uh, ministry fair focus, but people don't always fit into our structure of when, you know, sometimes they may be in the middle of the week uh, while they have some downtime. It might be while they're in prayer and God's prompting their hearts. It's important for us to be able to set up paths to ministry when the Holy Spirit is prompting their heart. Because people don't always uh, keep that same motivation. Sometimes there's a spike to say, I should really serve. And have you ever heard this from people who come into your ministry? You know, I've been thinking about doing this for a while now. Right? That's a key that we were not necessarily set up to there when. So uh, I want to give you a tool for this, the, an online form that will help you respond to people's when. Uh, there's a lot of different form sites you can use. There's Google Forms. Uh, JotPoint has a form. But my favorite is a site called WooFoo. Great site, bad name. W -U -F -O -O, W-O-O, WooFoo.com. The thing I like about WooFoo, besides the fact that it's free is that when someone fills out a WooFoo form, you can set up so that you will get a text alert and know that someone set out your form. So what we do in our ministry is we set up links on our website, uh, the, the link on, on flyers, send it out by email that links to this form. So if somebody says, I want to serve in your ministry, very short questions like what's your name, how do we contact you, where would you like to serve? And as soon as they fill it out, it sends me a text message and I go, Awesome. Somebody just filled out the form, and I call them right away. I say, thank you so much for filling out the form. When can we talk more? And they say, that was creepy. I just filled out that form 10 seconds ago, and I said, I know. That's how I knew you were available and how you knew you were thinking about it. And, and we set up time to, to put links together to move them forward to ministry. So that first tool is just simply that uh, online form. The second tool, as we talk about tools for building your team, is actually two things that go together. And I'm a big believer in these two things. First of all, an organizational chart. And secondly, 
job descriptions. So if you've never made an organizational chart for your ministry, what it basically is is just a hierarchical chart that shows who's kind of responsible for the whole thing, who are, is that person working with and overseeing, and who's with them on their teams. Uh, this is important for a couple reasons. One, it helps you get an organized picture of what your ministry really looks like, but more importantly, it helps you identify holes and places where you need to fill people. Not just places, but specific roles where you need people. So we can get into a habit, a bad habit in children's ministry where we say, we don't have enough people, we need more volunteers, we need, and it's just a song we sing, rather than saying, we need this person, right? When we say we need this person, and we have a job description that specifically outlines what that person is supposed to be doing, we can target who would be good for that role, uh, we can be looking for them. We can tell other people uh, what we're trying to fill, be specific about it, which helps them. And third, and I think really important, we can pray for that person. You know, I, I believe that God wants to answer prayers so that we notice. And when we're praying shotgun prayers going, God, give me some more good things, right? I don't think God's really excited about answering those prayers but when we say, God, I need a three-year-old's teacher. I need one, and I need one by Sunday. And he brings one. I think he loves it when we go, God, I can't believe it. I prayed specifically, and you brought what we needed. But you can't really be specific if you don't understand what you need. So an organizational chart and job descriptions are key for building your teams. The second area I want to talk about is uh, the tools to support your team. You know, uh, as we lead people in a busier and busier world, people are distracted, people are committed to a lot more things because they can be. People are committed in their work, their home, their kids, uh, their community, and we're asking them really to do another thing in, in, in committing with the church and, and giving them a, a curriculum to study, uh, having them come in for training. Those things get more and more cumbersome and we get less and less commitment from our volunteers as culture changes. Wouldn't it be cool if you could have something, let's say an app, like a phone app or a tablet app, where people could get the curriculum you want to put in their hands, have their uh, group questions that they're supposed to be leading on Sunday or their curriculum they're supposed to be leading, where you could give devotionals and encouragements to your volunteers, where they could track kids that are in their ministry to know who they are, what their birthday is, a list of them so they can be praying for them. Well, you know what? This app exists and it's available to you right now. This is the next tool I want to talk about. It's called the Lead Small app. And it's put out by the Rethink Group or the Orange Group. The uh, Lead Small app is uh, coordinated to go with Orange curriculum, but it's customizable so you can put any curriculum you want in the app. It's a free app to download so your small group leaders and your teachers can put their kids, uh, the kids that they minister with in that app, um, you know, their names, their birth dates, uh, things that are their favorite things. So if, you know, if they want to bring them a, a little treat or something, they can, uh, they can know those kids in that way, in that special way. And you can give encouragements and things through the app. So uh, even if you don't use uh, Orange Curriculum, you don't need to. You can put any curriculum you want in. It's a great tool to use, and I encourage you to take a look into the Lead Small app if you haven't already. You could develop an app for your ministry, but it's not going to be as good as the one that's already available for free. Another uh, resource I want to give you to build your or to uh, encourage your team, and, and this one you may have know about already, but if you don't, I want to put it in your mind and in your pocket. Did you know that one of the largest churches in America offers all of their children's resources and curriculum to you for free? Life Church, Craig Groeschel's uh, pastor at LifeChurch.tv, offers all of their resources, not just children's, but all of their ministry resources, for free at open.lifechurch.tv. If you've got a gap where you're between curriculum, if you've got a new midweek ministry and you don't know what to do, if you have kids that are out of control and you need a video-driven curriculum to kind of draw in attention, check out open.lifechurch.tv. They have graphics, uh, they have uh, themes that you can use, and it's all there, and it's all free. Check it out. It's a great tool to put into your team's support. I was just talking this week with a volunteer in our small group ministry that said, Pastor Dan, 
uh, we've got all these kids in our small group and we kind of do our thing, but they're, they're doing nothing. They don't, they don't have anything. And I said, have you checked this out? Have you checked out open.lifechurch.tv? You can do curriculum in your home. All you need is a computer. And these kids can learn and grow, and it's set up to be engaging, uh, and, and it's well done stuff. The third uh, area that I want to talk about for tools to, uh, for your, to build your ministry is tools to build your influence. Now, these are uh, some very simple things, relatively, but, but they're things that are often overlooked. The first one is an email list of your parents. Now, I know what you're thinking. That is so 2005. No one emails anymore. People don't even read emails anymore. And you know what? You're right. Some people don't read emails, but some people do. And you know who reads email? that mom who's asking you what the kids camp dates for 2019 are, right? Though that very organized mom who wants to know everything, who wants every piece of information from you. She reads email and she wants to hear from you. Do you get swamped by email from organizations, corporations? Me too. Do you know why so many organizations and businesses send out email? Because it's really easy and it's pretty effective. It's not the most effective thing, I'll give you that, but for the time invested in sending an email to a large group of people, it reaches enough people that we would be foolish not to be doing it on a regular basis. I started an email list when I was uh, frustrated with myself that I was promoting an event. I think the event had just happened and I had parents going, coming up to me going, I didn't know about that. I would have loved to bring, why didn't we hear about that? And I went, well, I sent your kids home with a paper. It was talked about, I guess we could have done more. And I just made a decision. I said, I am never going to have that, to be in that situation again where parents didn't have the information given to them. So every week, I just sent everybody I could an email. When people said, I didn't have that information, I didn't know about that, I'd say, did you read my email? And then go, no. And I'd say, then it's your fault. <laughs> I didn't do that. But uh, I felt like doing that. And I felt a lot better that they did have the information. And when I said, did you check that email? They said, no. But you know what? I think I will in the future because I don't want to miss what you're doing. An email list is, uh, is a tool that you should be using. The second tool to build your influence, and you know this intrinsically about your own life, but I think you forget it about your ministry. You need to be employing shareable media, right? That's what we're doing. That's what society is about right now. We're promoting our life out there on media, and we're going, this would be a great opportunity to get a photo. Let's get it. Let's send it out there so everybody can see what I'm doing, right? Because I want to see what other people are doing. People want to see that same thing about your ministry, right? The parents who you're frustrated because they never bring their kids, they show up once every two months. If they see that awesome things are happening in your ministry, that's going to be a tool that will build your influence, that will draw people in. And, and, And let me just give you a little tip on this. If you're sharing something on Instagram, on Facebook, and you're having to say, please share, please get this out there, that might be a, a signal that you're not hitting the mark. It's okay to ask people to share, but you want to put things out there that people want to share organically. Does it go, this is so cool. I can't believe my church is doing this. You've got to see this. Tag all my friends. Uh, here's a few things that are good shareable topics. Are you ready for this? Okay, I'm going to go through this quick. Silly videos, footage of creative things that your ministry is doing, Pictures of kids with things like costume characters, like minions, stormtroopers, the mariner moose, blitz from the Seahawks, the Chick-fil-A cow, the Easter bunny, Santa Claus, minor celebrities, major celebrities, face in a hole, photo walls, photo booth with props, optical illusions, black lights, nativity signs, fake snow, or always popular, live animals. Kids love live animals. Parents love chic pictures with live animals, as long as those animals are not biting their kids. Important uh, distinction there. Now, what we're doing when we build our influence on social media is not uh, advertising our church in a way that's going to draw people in just because they saw that. But what we're doing and how we should think about promoting our shareable media is we are making the invitation 
to a friend that much easier for the people in our church. Do you ever re- go, drive down the, the, the street and see a big billboard for a church and think, is that really working? Are people going to that church because they put a billboard in, up? The truth is they're not. The reason that billboard is up is so that when the people that go to that church invite their friend, the friend says, I've heard about that church. I've seen it. Oh, yeah, the big billboard. We can do that for free with social media, promoting things on social media to say, hey, this is what our church is doing, tagging people in our, that, in our church. When they go to invite their neighbor, hey, would you like to come to my church? Oh, yeah, I saw your church with the Chick-fil-A cow. That was fun. I like my kids would like that. My kids invited a friend, a neighbor, to church for the first time. This neighbor had never been to church before, and she was a little hesitant. She said, I don't know. I don't think I can stand that long. And we went, what? We, you don't stand the whole time in church. She had seen church in some movie or had a picture that what you did is came and for two hours you stood in one spot and listened. Just by allowing shareable media to get out there, it can give a picture of what we're really about and what we're doing. The last tool, and just before I wrap up here, that I'm going to give you, because we've just talked about a few highlights of things, and, and you may be thinking, yeah, I've got some things that I would like to share with others, and I want to share what's working for other people. The most powerful tool that you can employ is networking. Get together with other leaders for lunch, for coffee. If you get an invitation to come to a children's ministry network gathering, go to it. Because every one of these things were things that I received from somebody else. Because they got something that was working, you had something that's working. When we put those together, we can make a greater and greater impact for the kingdom of God. Don't say you don't have time for networking. You don't have time not to network because you're going to invest so much more time with bad tools, tools that aren't doing the job when you could be firing up that chainsaw, busting through 22-inch logs, metaphorically, because you've got the tools, because you've heard what's working for other people. So together, we can build the kingdom. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you listening to me. And I look forward to how we can work together to build the kingdom with tools and resources. 